So as you can probably see from the title of the video, in this video, I'll be taking you through what I think is the ideal strategy for getting through an online pre-recorded lecture. While this has become much more relevant recently with all that's going on in the world and schools moving online, this is actually something I've been working on perfecting over the last year. When I started med school in August, all of our lectures were recorded and posted online later, so attendance at the in-person lectures was optional. In this video, I'm gonna take you through how to get through lectures efficiently and effectively, and why I think watching them online is actually better than watching them in person. So I've actually been watching lectures online or podcasting as they like to call it at UCLA since the first day of med school. For me, this was a lot different from college where I never had any recorded lectures and I had to go in person to every single one. I tried to get out of them what I could, but there were definitely some limitations. For example, some professors would go way faster than was reasonable for the material and some would go way slower and just talk about their personal opinions the whole time. On any end of the spectrum, this was never quite the ideal learning environment for me and I almost never walked out of a class feeling like I had a great understanding of the information. In med school with the lectures online, I've actually been able to remedy a lot of these problems and walk out of each lecture feeling like I have a good understanding of what was just taught to me. This has honestly saved me so much time throughout the course of med school and it's something I wish I would have known a lot sooner. I've broken up my strategy into three tips, but for me, you need all three tips to go together to really get the most out of this strategy, so I really recommend watching to the end of the video. I think the biggest step I took in learning to understand the information as it was presented to me was to press pause. As simple as this sounds, it wasn't really a natural thing for me to do. First of all, I think that some part of me thought that I was too good for that, which now I think is ridiculous, and I thought that I would be wasting time and being super inefficient if I were to press pause when watching a lecture, when I have a ton of lectures to get through. It's also unnatural because when you're watching a lecture in real life, you don't have this option, so we're not used to doing that. But when you have the option and you fail to pause when you don't understand something, you're missing important context that that lecturer is trying to build up. Before I started doing this, I found that I was just pushing off the information for later, saying that I would study it when I went through the slides again. But really, I needed to understand that information in that exact moment because it was really crucial for me understanding the next thing that the lecturer was saying and the thing the lecturer would say three minutes down the line and 30 minutes down the line. And a lot of the time, this context is built up not only in what the lecturer is saying, but also in what's written on the slide. For me, when I'm at an in-person lecture, it's always been really difficult to listen to what the lecturer is saying, read through what's on the slides, and try to comprehend all of it together, all at the same time, when I don't have the ability to take a break and think about it. And because of this, I would always be missing about half the information, and all of that information was important for understanding the next information, so eventually I would just get lost and kind of tune out and say I would learn it later. This made actually going to class pretty much a waste of time because I wasn't really learning anything during the class, unless I had a really good lecturer. But when I started to develop the instinct to press pause every time that I hadn't read through a full slide or I didn't understand something, I found that I had this magical time where A, the lecturer wasn't talking to me, and distracting me. B, I had just heard the lecturer explain that slide, so it was fresh in my head. And C, I had the opportunity to take notes, which is coming up in the next tip. But at the end of that pause in the lecture, I had a much better understanding of the topic, and therefore I was able to move forward knowing that and being able to build on that knowledge. Now, you might be thinking, yeah, well, thinking it through once is great and all, but I think I would forget it later on. And that's where this next tip comes in. Now here's the most beautiful thing about pausing when you're in the middle of the lecture. You have this time where no one's talking in your ear and you don't have to worry about what's coming next that you might be missing when you're taking notes. Now, since undergrad, my strategy has actually changed a bit for this. In undergrad, I would have my tablet out in front of me and have the PowerPoint from the lecturer printed out in front of me and take notes right on that PowerPoint. I think this worked really well for in-person lectures, and I know that a lot of my classmates in med school still use this strategy, so clearly it works fairly well. But for me, I've found that it's actually been more beneficial to switch to writing on an electronic blank piece of paper, though a normal blank piece of paper would work just as well. Now, why would I do this? 
wouldn't it be better to have more complete notes with all the information from the PowerPoint directly there in front of me so when I review later, it's just right there? Well, this was where I had to ask myself, do I want my notes to be complete or do I want my understanding to be complete? For me, when I had the PowerPoints right there, I would never write down anything on the PowerPoints because it's already there, right? Well, the thing is, what's on the PowerPoints is usually what's on the test because what the lecturer says in the lecture is usually somewhat left out and extra information. And what you're writing down is what you'll remember the best because there's so many studies out there saying that when you write something down by hand, you'll remember it better. So in those two things was the problem. I was never actually getting the best memory for the things that would actually be on the test. So I've actually switched to this strategy. I write down in as few words as possible the information that I know I will struggle to remember later on. Sometimes this means I have to write a lot to cover a slide because I don't have any background knowledge on that, the lecture was a little bit confusing, and I know I won't remember it later. But other times I barely have to write anything because I know I already have a solid understanding of that topic either from the lecture or from previous knowledge. By writing down just the information that I'll struggle with later, I'm suddenly creating this extremely efficient study tool that I can use later that doesn't waste my time on the stuff that I already know. You might remember that this was a major theme throughout a lot of my previous videos where you want to focus your time on the stuff that you don't know because if you're studying stuff you already know, you're just wasting your time. So I'm going to show you some of my notes so you can see what I mean. So as you can see, I use OneNote to organize my notes, though you could easily use a paper notebook or some of the other productivity apps that are available. I personally use an iPad, which I'll be talking about in a later video, but really anything with a pen that you can physically write with should work. So as you can see, I put a week of lectures worth on a single page in OneNote, and then I divide that page into the individual lectures. You'll notice that some of the lectures have a ton of information under them, and others have barely any. And like I said, this really depended on the background I had in that subject, so if I had majored in it like a biochem lecture, I didn't need to write as much, but if I were less familiar with it, something brand new like iron metabolism for me, I had to write a lot more. As you can see, I have arrows connecting different concepts as I learn them, and I'm able to draw out the more visual concepts. This new form of note-taking has been an absolute lifesaver in med school. I'm able to review for a test so much more efficiently by just reading through a couple pages of handwritten notes rather than flipping through thousands of PowerPoint slides trying to find all of the information that I had written down. So to me, this strategy of note-taking is far superior and saves a ton of time in the long run. But you might be thinking, well, if you're pausing to read through the slides and take notes, doesn't it take absolutely forever to get through a lecture? This is where my third tip comes in. Now, in terms of time efficiency, this tip is absolutely critical. I recommend putting the lecture at the fastest possible speed at which you can still comprehend what's coming out of the lecturer's mouth. For me, this is usually between one and a half to two and a half times the normal speed. Now, I realize that most web players, if they have a speed option, it usually only goes up to 2x speed, but there are ways to get around this and go a lot faster. You can just download a plugin for Chrome, for example. I can link the one I use down in the description, but there are a ton of them out there that work, and if you just do a quick Google search, you'll probably come across a good amount. Remember, you don't have to worry about this being too fast for you to get everything all at once because you'll be pausing to read the slides and take notes. You really just want to get it so you understand what the lecturer has said. Honestly, this third part of it is what makes it all come together and work so well. The time that you've saved by watching the lecture at a faster speed, you're able to take and really think about the information, read through the slides, and take notes. So in about the same amount of time, or a little bit longer than the lecture would have originally been, You've both gained a much better understanding of the topic, and you've developed an extremely efficient study tool which you can use to study for the test later. So I hope that you found these tips worthwhile and that they are helpful, especially during this time where a lot of lectures are online. When I started using this myself, it honestly changed my life as a student. It allowed me to understand the information a lot better and saved me a ton of time so I was able to do other things with my life. I really hope that for some of you, it might be able to do the same. <laughs>